now. Live from the 2015 Vancouver International Wine Festival, Anthony Gizmondi and Casey Wilson. This is Tony and Casey's Best of Food and Wine on Sea Isle 650. Welcome back to the Best of Food and Wine. I'm Tony Gizmondi. I'm Casey Wilson. Wake up, Jane Ferrari. Wake up. <laughs> Uh, Jane, our next guest is Jane Ferrari. Uh, Jane, have you done like 45 events in six days? Like, if I was your boss, I'd give you three months off. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm shifting to your, I'm shifting to your stable now. I've been in everything but a ham sandwich at this <laughs> festival. You couldn't, you couldn't even get a ham sandwich tonight because our producer made you come on before your dinner was finished. That's true. Yeah, I want to apologize for that, Jane. And I hear you and Tony had a big party on Sunday night. Instead of going to the Academy Awards, you did your own deal. Yeah, no, we uh, we uh, did a, a really lovely uh, dinner for a doctor school um, up at Hawksworth, and uh, it was just a nice way for us to say thanks very much, Vancouver. Thanks very much to the Vancouver Sun and, and to Gizmondi for really supporting Australia across the board. Great. It was great. We made a lot of dough, and uh, I think it'll make a difference going down the road. Uh, Jane, it's been a great week. I don't know. I, I don't even know how you could put it in perspective. You've done so many different things, but the the mission was to come to Vancouver and say, "Hey, you know, we're not the old Australia." Do you think that's been accomplished? I think uh, I think perspective has changed. Yeah. I think the pendulum has swung. Uh, you know, you know, back to where uh, folks are really interested in what's going on yeah. under, you know, behind the scenes, under the under the rock, and. Um, Away from probably those, you know, that era of uh, Australia represented by ghost brands, more yep. or less. Um, you know, up a gum, uh, up a gum tree, two birds, what walk in the pram, whatever you want to call it this week. And I think, you know, folks really want to. They want to talk to us. Yes. They want to. They want to know well, how come we didn't know that. No more critter wines. No, no. They want to know what we're actually up to at home. And I think, you know, we probably our own worst enemy because, you know, that tall poppy syndrome in Australia. If you actually get out there and tell what, tell everyone what you're doing, everyone sort of cuts you off at the knees. And we're, we've probably probably been our own worst enemy and not told, the, you know, our story as, as as well as we could have. Yes. You did a great job last night. We were in a in a Barossa Valley uh, tasting, and we had 12 wines in front of us in 95 minutes, and there was many things that were to be discussed. But you did a great job of connecting the families of the Barossa and how the information's been passed on or passed down the line. That's it's right. really important in the wine business. It is, and I was really lucky because I was, a, I was a youngster. I was 19 when I did my first vintage in the Valley. Yeah. And I was there when all those legends were in their prime. You know, Peter Lehman and Bob McLean and Robert O'Callaghan and, you know, Grant Burge. You saw all these guys every day. Mm -hmm. Wolfie Blass came to work every day. I did my apprenticeship there with John Glazer. And, you know, I know the names and the faces, and I was lucky enough to be there to see that kind of domino effect where Peter Lehman left, you know, Saltrams and went to start his own operation, and Charlie Melton was his seller foreman, and now Charlie's got his own place yeah. that's launching careers itself, you know. So, so I was lucky to see it. You did your apprenticeship with John Glazer. Like, yes, were sir. you just like driving through Nuriutpun in a car at about 150 miles an hour every <laughs> every late afternoon? Because that's the stories I've heard. No, no, I I used to live I used to live in room one uh, above the front bar at the at the Brow House Hotel in Angus, and I used to take the back road to work every day. <laughs> but those, those were pre occupational health and safety. You started at seven o'clock in the morning at Vintage. You finished when you finished. Yeah. Yes. It didn't matter if it was 12, 14, or 16 hours, and the next day you turned up at 7. And uh, I used to drive an old mustard-coloured uh, Ford XD panel van that they, you know, called the, the man trap. Uh, I wish it was true. Um, but, um, you know, that's that, that was those days, yeah. Yes. You you have a long history at Yolumba with uh, Robert Hill Smith. How did you, how did that come about? How did you and Robert get together at one point? And how did you manage to get the job that you have well, I actually came back from Sydney working in a big spirits bottling operation mm -hmm. uh, because my mum was unwell, and I took a job at Yolumba because you know they had a you know they bottled for themselves and everyone else, and um, he saw something that I didn't see and basically pulled me into his office one day and said uh, that uh, Robert Mundavi had this idea that family-owned wineries could compete with the rest of the world by taking folks from the winery and sending them out as ambassadors to the world. And he just said, oh, I've decided to do that and uh, I'm going to do it with you. And I said, well, don't do that. I'm not a marketing person. 
And he said, well, you're going anyway. And he said, let's see how it goes for a year. And that was 14 years ago. Wow. And that's how I got my job. And he didn't want a marketing person. He wanted a storyteller, I think. Yeah, well, that's, that's, yeah, that's what he says now. And a bit of a leap of faith on his part, but I'm so pleased that he did that. And you lived in L.A. for a while. Uh, 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 Sorry, in uh, Napa. Uh, no, I, uh, our office is in Napa. Yes, I uh, thought you lived I'm in there an, for about three months. Uh, no, in and out of there like a yo-yo. Yes, okay. Yeah. But you yeah. regularly travel across the U. You did travel across the U.S. for three or four months at a time. Which oh, was absolutely, un, yeah. Which is nuts. I'm about to do the same thing come 5 yeah. o'clock tomorrow morning, yeah. Yeah. Off to Houston, Texas. At 5 a.m. tomorrow morning, you're going to Houston, Texas. At 5, I go to the uh, airport, it's, yeah. It's just outrageous. Nuts, Any good really. food in Houston? Um, there is actually. There's a whole new area that's opening up uh, where they've got a ho- uh, quite a lot of uh, the. Fo- it's deceptive. Um, the folks from Commander's Palace down in uh, New Orleans have just opened a place up in uh, Houston. Wow. That, I mean, the pralines every day exactly the same as you get in New Orleans. No, Houston's surprising actually. There's a there is a really great uh, Mexican restaurant in Houston. I'm going to think of the name of it and give it to you. <laughs> That will be I, useful. Yes. I, I wish I had a bit more time in Vancouver. I love the food here. Yes, yeah. you do yeah. good. Yeah. Our guest is Jane Ferrari from Yolumba Winery. Jane, we should talk briefly about the wine you brought along, a GSM, yeah. uh, which, if you don't know, is Grenache Raz Mataro. This is the 2012 The Strapper. Yeah, it's some... Um, do, do you guys sit around the room and come up with these names, or do you no, just get them thrown at you? This is the... No, it's the chief. Um, the family uh, at Yolumba Hillsmith family have been breeding racehorses for 60 years. Yeah. And in uh, Australian horse racing vernacular, the strapper is the groom. And the strapper is the hero behind the horse because he looks after the horse 23 hours out of the day. But if the horse wins a race, it's all about the horse, the jockey, the trainer, the owner. Right. He's the hero behind the horse, and Shiraz is the hero from the brossa. And Grenache and Mataro have probably stretched more, ca- uh, shira- you know, uh, Shiraz than we care to admit to. So Grenache and Mataro are the heroes behind Shiraz, and therefore the Strapper gets its name. Delicious Spina. wine, three grape varieties. So great they, label. they all bring something to the blend. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you? How could you explain what the winemakers thinking with this wine and this blend? Well, you want you want three contributions, but you want them seamless. You yep. don't want them to be clunky. Yep. So we've used a majority of Grenache because that's all raspberry over rosemary. And that really lovely aromatic uh, sweet over savoury leads into that really lush, juicy fruit Shiraz sort of 30%. And then you've got that 10% oomph factor of the Mataro that, that holds it all together and gives it that lovely solid finish. And um, in, for my money, it's, you know, it's screaming for duck. It's screaming for anything but salt, really. <laughs> yes. <laughs> screaming for duck. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Peking duck. That's my pick for this oh, one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Peking Delicious. duck. And this yeah. is a city to have it in. I tell you what, I, I've i really tried hard, but I can't get out of Miku or Manami. Oh, I, just, I oh, know. It's a great spot. You, ruin, it? you ruined me with that flame-seared uh, Oshi Sushi. I'm gone. Yeah, that's with it. With the jalapenos on top, um, that, them, that's it for me. That's so fantastic. Yeah. Maybe we can air freight that over to you when you're not, you know, when you're longing for something from yeah. Vancouver. Or I might just have to relocate. Yeah. <laughs> this would be a good uh, base for you. Oh, it would be fantastic it base. It would. Yeah. Fantastic base. I'd, I'd love it. And uh, now that I've got over the scary, air, you know, um, float plane visit to Victoria. Yeah. I love that place to bits. Yeah, and, isn't it a great city? Uh, we love float planes. Sometimes they flip over though when they land. Yeah, not what I need to hear. <laughs> no, but you know what? You're much safer in a float plane than any other aircraft. Uh, no, I, I really do like it. Until it flips over. Victoria and Vancouver, you know, they, they you come to town and you have to you have to know your stuff. Yes. It is a, it's a food and wine savvy part of, you know, little corner of the globe and um, uh, whilst it's tremendous to come in, you have to know your stuff. And have you been to the Okanagan Valley yet? No, no. I have not. No. Jane, you've got you, to you go. Need four, you, need four, you need four hours off because you need to get up and back. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. I think we'll find a jet to get you up there and back. And, I think uh, so. It would be suitable for you to go there. Yeah, Jane, well, if you took one thing away from this week, what, what, what might it be uh, from your week in Vancouver? You've done so many things. You've been such a big, big uh, uh, part of the delegation. Uh, a wise part of it. Is there something you could take away? What will you tell when you go back to Australia? What will you tell them about how what happened here? I think um, I've been spruiking about how good uh, the Vancouver Wine Festival is for a long time. And to that end, we brought some folks up from Seattle uh, mm-hmm. to this event. 
as an incentive for our Seattle distributor. Wow. Um, yeah. Um, but if I go home, I'm actually not going to change what I say. My story's been the same for the last three or four years. You have to travel. You have to be in the arena. If you're not in the arena, you're not in the game. Mm-hmm. People want to talk to the person. They don't want to. Do- they don't want to go four stages removed. Yeah. And uh, they want the story, and they and they want it as close to touching the stone as they can get. So, I'll be going home to say we have to travel, and you can't miss Vancouver. Yes. That's the way it is. I'm not trying to get on your right side, but if you want to be in this part of the, if you want to be in the Pacific Northwest and in uh, and in British Columbia. You must be here. Great. You've and, always uh, been on our right side, and I understand you <laughs> have a very cool Tony app. I do. I do. Well, you know, the, if you want to get on the right side, you've got to go straight to the big kahuna, and you got to do the right thing. So, yeah, I've got the new uh, official uh, Gizmondi fan club uh, uh uh, screensaver oh Tony. My God. Yeah. There you go. Oh my That's I better I better get that on my That's phone. the best. That's the way. Jane, you're the best. I try. Listen, thanks so much for uh, coming on. I know you've had a really stressful week, a lot of work to do, but you made time for us. We're so happy and our listeners are more happy because they get your wisdom. And uh, the next time I see Robert Hill Smith, uh, you are getting a raise. Oh, thanks very much. And, uh, <laughs> you know, good luck with it all. And, and thanks very much, Vancouver, and keep the faith. Yeah. Thank you. Keep on trucking. Thanks very much. Jane Ferrari from uh, Yolumba Winery is really one of the true forces in the uh, Australian wine industry today. She would be embarrassed to hear us say that, but really, uh, she's done such a terrific job this week spreading the word about Oz. We're coming to you live tonight from the floor of the Vancouver International Wine Festival. (laughs) We are on AM 650. Sea Isle, I can't say AM, they won't let me say that. I'd like to say FM. No, I can't say that either. It's so hard to be a wine guy and a radio guy. Yeah. I'll tell you what, why don't you stick around? We're going to have a quick break, and Casey Wilson and I are going to be right back. There's lots more still ahead. Live from the 2015 Vancouver International Wine Festival, this is Tony and Casey's Best of Food and Wine on Sea Isle 650.